wish I had a secret here. To uh, I wish I could come here um, and give you a secret about improving students' games, but I don't. Uh, it's about identifying your students' weak areas, diagnosing why they are weak, and then creating a detailed, realistic action plan that, if followed, will improve these areas a little bit at a time. Doing this with a student moves you from an instructor to a, to a coach. So again, doing this, as a, uh, doing this with a student will move you from just being an instructor, somebody standing out giving, giving golf lessons. It'll move you from being an instructor into a coaching role. But to be a coach, you must have a willing student to take your hand. Most students, once they realize what the journey entails, their hand falls away. The game is just too tough. And it is terribly tough to play consistent to uh, play consistently well. To just play and advance the ball without too much thought of scoring, that's easy. But to play golf reasonably well is very difficult. As Golf Hall of Famer Jackie Burke says, golf and boxing are very similar. To be good, you better accept the fact that you're going to get knocked down a lot. But who's willing to get back up? Who's willing to keep trying? Who, who has grit? That's why there's so few two handicappers at, every, at everybody's club. Jack Nicholas said, getting good at golf and then staying good is a tough and lonely and endless journey with lots of dead ends and other frustrations to strain your body and stress your mind along the way. Which is, of course, why so few of the tens of thousands who set out on it to get very, to, to actually move along, get very far. My good friend and fellow PGA golf professional, Justin Pointer, made some valid points to me the other day when I was talking to him on the phone why some people lack grit or commitment. One is just simple lack of focus. We can see it all, all around us every day. Multitasking, instant gratification, a bombardment of information. People's minds are frazzled and scattered. One-pointed attention and focus are the exception, not the norm. The other is lack of time. Our, our members are pressed for time. Work and family are extremely demanding these days. It's one of the key obstacles that we all have in trying to grow the game. Golf is awfully time consuming, and we all know that to make a significant improvement in golf takes time and, and dedication. And some people just don't have that luxury. So acknowledging these difficulties, how do we get our students and members to embark on a committed path to achieving their goals. One of the most effective ways is to, go, is to cultivate a love for the game yourself and cultivate a passion for teaching and helping others play better. This alone can inspire some students to take this difficult but rewarding journey. And to be an inspiring teacher, you don't necessarily have to use high-tech computers, use fancy, fancy, term, fancy terminology, or be on a top teacher list. As Jim McLean used to tell me, Chris, you're a top teacher if and only if your students get better. Actually got me thinking a, l a little bit um, about um, the assistants we would hire down at the Jim McLean Golf School. And um, we would hire them part-time during the winter months, which, which was our peak, our peak time. Um, and it was common for us to have, you know, eight, nine, ten, uh, ten assistants. So it was a very large, it's a very large group. And um, I could always tell that these young men and ladies would come to, to Doral with the thought of just working there for a winter to get the school's name on their resume. They'd arrive without too much passion for teaching. This job was just something to be able to say they did in a future job interview that would give them teaching credibility. But amazingly, 
many of them after a winter of being around the the golf school's master instructors who were very passionate about teaching and helping students these young assistants would would leave hooked on teaching golf they left with a different aspiration so some came wanting to be head golf professionals and when they left many of them wanted to become full-time teaching professionals which makes me uh, think of the old saying some things are not taught they're caught so I could I definitely saw that first uh, firsthand so I'd like to encourage anyone to renew their enthusiasm for teaching. How? Well, by, by taking lessons, maybe, from, from top teachers or watching top teachers teach. Become inspired. I know my former boss, Jim McClain, did this early in his career, probably more than, probably more than anyone. For instance, he attended the Jimmy Ballard School of Golf in Pell City, Alabama, nine times. He wasn't afraid to invest his own money in, in, in his career. One other thing I'd like to pass along that has helped my teaching, it's, it's, uh, it is something Jim told me a long time ago, um, is when he, was, when he would just say again, he'd say, you know, if you're a top teacher, if your students get better, it's as, it's as, it's as simple as that. And after over a very long period, uh, I found that most of the time improvement will not come by leaps and bounds, certainly not in golf. For most students, imp improvement comes usually in very small, very small increments. There's no sudden leap to greatness in golf. As Coach Wooden says in one of his books, people learn more effectively if information is given in bite-sized amounts rather than large amounts. And don't look for the big, quick, sudden improvement. Seek the small improvements one day at a time. That's the only way it happens. We had a great saying at the, at the Jim McLean School in our, um, in our teaching bays. We had a lot of different sayings up to try to motivate but um, one of them one of them I thought was good uh, and it was by the by the Buddha and it said the jug fills drop by drop so translated to me at least to my mind when I read that I thought of that as habits good or bad are acquired little by little so after after reading Bob's article, I recognized that growing up, I possibly did some of the things that were in, in the article. Most of them un, unwittingly, but, but actually some of them not. For instance, I've always been more fascinated by the mental game much more than the golf swing. I certainly had my moments getting wrapped up in swing mechanics, but looking over my career, I've, I've been mostly fascinated by the mental game. Even at an early age, I recognized that there were odd swings that work. I recognized it in junior golf. I saw it in college golf. I witnessed it in mini tour golf. I witnessed it in club, club pro golf. Um, and you can see it on all the